What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. I have been gone for quite a while. I've been busy with work. Work took over my life for like the past two months, so I have not been able to vlog. But I decided today I was gonna pick up the camera. I don't have anything car related to do, but I mean, I do have this compressor. If you guys have been keeping up with the channel, you know that I bought this compressor from Harbor Freight about eight months ago, roughly. And it went out after maybe a few handful of uses. I called Harbor Freight, they didn't want to replace it for me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take it apart. They told me either way, I'm gonna have to take care of it. I'm gonna have to fix it myself. Just to go over, this is 175 PSI, Mick Graw, 21 gallon compressor. And so what it was doing was it would not build more than maybe 90 PSI at one point. And then eventually it just completely blew out and didn't build any pressure. So what I'm gonna do is like I said, I'm just gonna open it up. I don't think I'm gonna fix it. I don't have any parts, but I wanna open it up and see what exactly is going on. I wasn't gonna vlog this, but I thought I couldn't find any information on it. So why not vlog it, create some information for if any of you guys are having any issues, this is what you know would most likely be your problem because like I said, I could not find any information. So I hope I'm helping a few of you guys out. First off, I'm starting by taking off these Phillips screws all the way around. I'm gonna take off all this Phillips screws all the way around and take this cover off. I've done this before just to look in and this cover pops off and then you're gonna get into all the internals of the actual compressor. So there are your internals. Here is the actual piston that creates compression and I believe this is what's shot. I believe the rings in here or whatever is in here, I was told it might be a ring. I believe whatever's in here is shot so I'm going to try to just take this piece off, but if I can't, I guess I'll pull the whole thing off and work on that. This is basically your internals for this compressor. Looks really simple, really basic. Like I said, um, I would have no leaks anywhere. I would have a little bit of a leak in here, but other than that, it did not seem like it leaked from anywhere. One day it just shot. It just sounded like it shot. So I think that it is going to be the actual piston or one of the rings or the cylinder itself but we'll get into this and check it out here in a bit really quick i did want to say that i did not store this out here in the weather it was in the shed and it was out of the weather and it was not out here being weathered on it is actually as you can see it is pretty clean you could you'd be able to see all the water stains if it was watered on but this is just dust from inside the shed so no water no weather really contamination inside this so it's not because i was irresponsible left it outside i left it in a dry safe environment and it still went out so i started scoping around and i said let me take the whole complete thing out then i thought what if i leave everything and just take the piston and the cylinder out so i started looking around and it seems like all right i have to take four bolts out to in order to take this out there is also this l down here so i grabbed my 19 millimeter came down here i reached and grabbed this hose and it was loose so i really think that this would actually be the main issue because it was leaking and then i don't know where it just like i said shot so i'm going to take this off this hose right here and I'm going to see if I can somehow get it back on here. I'm going to find a way to seal this. If not, I think I can go actually go to a parts store and buy something for maybe like a flange tool and flange this hose again. And then so I can put this fitting back over, tighten it, and maybe that'll fix our issue because it did sound like it was hissing, losing pressure somewhere. And this leads to the actual cylinder. So we are going to actually work on this piece first before i take anything out and there seems to be our issue this fitting was welded onto here was soldered or something and then it just broke it looks like it was one piece but this pipe is actually probably really cheap and so it probably broke off so i'm gonna grab a screwdriver try to pry that out or get this piece out and maybe we might be able to fix this today but yeah, that's how it should look, but it was blown off, so let's see if we could take this piece out. I decided to take the whole piece off, and this is the other side. This is the good side, and this works perfectly fine. So when we go to this side, we see we cannot flange this. We have to put one of these little brass copper adapters on this end, and it looks like we might have to maybe shave it down because there's a chip there. There's a chip right there. We might be able to still use it like that, but we will definitely need to put one of these copper brass fittings back on it, and then we will be able to use it again. But 
I thought it was gonna be something internal, which just seemed kind of odd to me, but I'm glad that it's just a hose. I'm pretty sure we can pick this up or have one made here. Probably, I could probably take it in Napa actually, and they could probably put one of these fittings, but yeah, it's a lot better situation than having to find the compressors. Um, I'm probably gonna end up fixing it and I'll finish the video off, but I'm glad I found it. I'm glad I found out what was wrong. If you guys check your compressor and this was it, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. I actually did not really think of looking at any of the hoses. So, yeah, give me a thumbs up. All right, so here's my attempt to fix it. I grabbed a file, just kind of filed this piece down. You can see it's a little shiny now, just from the tip. You can buy these fittings at your hardware store. So I'm just going to slide this fitting on here. It fits perfect. It's not loose at all. It has to fit just completely, basically perfect to the pipe. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide it on. I'm going to tap it with the hammer, just try to get it past, like maybe all the way back here. And if it doesn't slide, just keep kind of filing it. A sandpaper would probably be ideal just because it's a lot finer and you won't grind into it too much. You literally just want to get this on back, back here. And then once you tighten it with the actual nut again, it should squeeze and it should make pressure again. Okay, so I think we fixed it. We kind of pressed the hose on with the fitting and... So that should automatically shut off once it is completely charged. So really quick, I'm just gonna show you guys the next project that I'm gonna be working on probably here within the next couple of weeks. Talked about this before, but I never really got into it. But basically, I gotta get this thing running. Here's the engine for it. This is the engine I'm gonna use. So I already called the machine shop and they said that it wouldn't cost me anything to get this all checked out, make sure that it's all within specs that it should be or if i'm gonna have to order any parts or anything so i'm gonna start taking this thing apart sometime this week so you guys will get content on v8 i'm planning on putting some higher compression pistons shaving the head and the block thinner head gasket and maybe trying to run a little bit higher compression and i'm definitely gonna drop a cam in it so we are gonna make a little bit more power than what a stock 350 puts out but nothing crazy nothing major we'll see exactly what happens with this i might boost it in the future i already was looking at manifolds and they are not that expensive i know a little bit of boost would not hurt they would definitely this would definitely put out a lot more power but like i said first things first gotta take it apart take it to the shop and see what needs to be done i think it had one of the cylinders misfiring so I hope it's not a ring. I hope that the bore is not scored on any of these. If they are, I will have to order oversized pistons, but I hope it's not a rod, e a rod bearing either or a crank bearing. Hopefully all the bottom end is good and we just have to work on really, if we have to bore it, I'm down to bore it. Boring would be actually pretty cool. So if we have to bore it, great. Worst case scenario, we have to get a new block, but Hopefully everything bottom end wise is good and we just have to work on heads and like I said the cam maybe aftermarket pistons but I'm not sure yet. This is definitely going to be the winner build. I think this truck isn't missing many things. There's a lot in here but like I said we will see what exactly comes out. This is probably what I'm going to be working on all winter. So it seems like we built full pressure. It shuts off once it builds full pressure, and yeah, we have, looks like the 175. So we built full pressure on the tank, so it seems like that worked. That was the only issue, I guess, so I'm glad we got that fixed, and I'm glad I got my compressor back because, like I said, Harbor Freight did not want to help me out here. I was about to take apart the whole thing just to figure out what was wrong, so I'm glad we figured this out. So, like I said, I do have a project for this winter. If you guys want to see how that goes, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I'm definitely going to work on that. Now that I have my compressor back, I'm actually really glad that I decided to work on it today. I'm glad I found the problems i'm gonna end the video here guys thank you for watching if you guys made it to the end thank you very much if this helped you out at all go down and hit the like button comment down below if you guys need anything i'm always active in the comment section hit that subscribe button and i'll see you guys in the next one